Welcome back to the Tacoma Holic channel, everybody. In today's video, the Tacoma is getting a custom rear crossbar that my buddy for Low Pro on Instagram is gonna make for me. So I'm driving down there, about three, three and a half hour drive, but it will be well worth it. As many of you know, I recently added the Banff Bay Area Metal Fab HD rear hangers. If you haven't seen that video, check it out right here. And today we are adding a crossbar that is pretty much going to connect both sides of those hangers together through the middle, through the back of the truck, making the ride better both on and off-road and giving it some torsional rigidity. And I'm super excited, so let's get started. All right guys, so here are my Bay Area Metal Fab HD hangers. And if you have the same counterpart from Archive Garage, called the Hammer Hangers, of course, Archive Garage actually has an option where you can get a crossbar from them that connects between these. I believe Bay Area Metal Fab is gonna do something similar because you can see mine, they came with all these holes already pre-cut, I would assume, to mount that. But I'm getting with my buddy for Low Pro today. He is actually gonna build one for me. He did one for his truck, so it's gonna be just as strong, but just a little bit custom, and I'll get to show you the process. All right, so he is just using some cardboard to make the template for the side plates. And if you recognize this garage, yes, this is where I was just a few weeks ago to get the rear shock relocation done. And he is using Honey Nut Cheerios box, but you can use whatever cereal box you want. <laughs> We're out of Honey Nut Cheerios. Very nice. Those steel toe boots? Yes. They are? <laughs> you should get some. Just in case. Holes drill, doing a quick test fit with the grade eight hardware to make sure everything lines up. Yeah, look at that. All right, cool. I was sitting here wondering how I was gonna line this one up, and I realized I can just flip it, oh. <laughs> and now it's there. Now I can mark where this other one is. Okay, so once he got one of the plates good on one side, he just put a fresh piece of steel over that, traced it, used that mirror image for the opposite side. Now we're gonna bolt these on underneath so we can do the measurements for the actual distance in between these for the crossbar. Okay, so my buddy has a software program already like pretty much in place for the tube he's gonna make, the brace, where you just pretty much input the like the center number and it adjusts everything from there, so that's what he's measuring here. And there, hopefully it's showing up on screen, it's inverted, but that is the final measurement. And this is the tube bender. It almost looks like a terminator arm, but this is amazing. Cannot wait to see this thing in action. Two very expensive. And I could imagine. The cheaper yeah. ones, this one, was like a manual one where you bolt it into the concrete. And instead of this, you have like a big long lever and like a, a bunch of like ratcheting teeth to like pull it along. But since I'm renting, I don't want to bolt it to the ground. So this bracket was 100 bucks. This is like 80 bucks. And then now it's converted to hydraulic and I don't need okay. to bolt it to the ground. I was going to say, the first time I saw this, I was like, doesn't that roll around when it I starts to water. bend? <laughs> I had a few people. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about, obviously. confusing to use the first time? Oh yeah, it's still confusing. <laughs> Let 
You did this, right? Yeah. Okay. But they sent a bracket, but I bought unwelded instead. I can weld myself instead. <laughs> it's a crazy machine. Forty-two degrees. All right. All right. Now it's gonna start bending. All right. Pull it out, rotate it, and do the same thing for the other side? Pretty much. It's so cool. This right side is a little longer, so he's gonna get his center measurement from there and then lop off the excess right here. Stacking them dimes. Tough line, man. Okay, so the body of the crossbar with the sides is done. He used the cardboard method again to trace for some gussets here for the corners. Getting ready to cut that out. All right guys, getting ready to prime and paint the crossbar. You know the routine by now. Went ahead and wiped it down with a microfiber towel and some acetone. I'm gonna hit it with a few coats of self-etching primer. I love this stuff, it is fantastic. And I usually go with flat black, but I'm gonna use some gloss black. This is the Rust-Oleum. Should give it a nice finish to make it pop just a little bit. I know it's gonna be under the bed all the time, but I'll be excited about it, so can't wait for that. I'll put links for this stuff in the description below. I always use this self-etching primer for my painting projects, so not going to actually film this process. You guys have seen it a thousand times before. All right, guys, getting ready to install this. Got my grade 8 hardware ready to go. I did go ahead and remove the spare tire or mechanism, whatever you want to call it, just because it looked like it was going to hit the middle, and I don't run my spare tire down there anyway. This is just held in with four bolts on the top. I had to spray some PV Blaster on mine because they weren't budging at all, but let it soak for a few seconds, and those bolts popped right off. It is sort of weird to get under there. If you have a like a flex head ratcheting wrench, uh, 14 mil, if I remember correctly, this will pop right off. And this is pretty beefy. That probably weighs like five, 10 pounds right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed and show you what it looks like. And there is the finished product, guys. Went in relatively smoothly. I could only really get it in from the top and these bottom sort of left, I guess bottom lower corner. There's like a notch right here. So I slit the hole over that. Got one side on and used like a flathead screwdriver just to pop the other side on. Got the bolts in place, tighten them down as tight as I could. Now all that's really left is to take it on a quick test drive and see if I can feel a difference. Of course, definitely feel a difference off-road, but curious if I can feel it on-road as well. So I will report back in just a minute. All right, guys, just got back from a quick on-road test. Obviously, I'll really be able to tell the difference when I go off-road, but even just driving around before I started doing any kind of like, you know, side-to-side -side aggressive chops, turns, whatever you want to call it. I could definitely feel the rear of the truck felt a lot tighter, so I can't wait to see how that feels the next time I get off-road. 
That will just about do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel by watching. I hope you have a fantastic 4th of July weekend. Help the channel grow by sharing this video with your friends and family on social media. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.